Sometimes when you want to let loose, it's time to just let it all hang out. So what do I do for fun here on this channel? Well, I light things up. That's what I like to do. Not with fire or anything like that, though sometimes fire does happen. But I like high voltage. And I like to run projects with high voltage. I take a simple ZVS and a flyback and you can't believe the amount of experiments I can do with this create beautiful plasma rays and then just create absolutely frightening voltage anyway let's take a look man this is one of my funnest things to do I was kind of bored today so I uh, made this I was just waiting for parts to come in anyway I got these little voltage modules from Amazon and I hooked them up in a uh, Kind of a star pattern here and then I put uh, three double-a batteries to it so let's go ahead and take a look and see what it does here That's only three. Thought to it. Anyway, that's it. I wanted to see what would happen if I took high voltage modules, turned them on, and then run a flyback spark right through it. The effect was really awesome. I like the fact that this thing started out really calm and then it just hit and then it hit again and it just lit up the whole room man it looked cool and it sounded just gnarly those were absolutely terrifying experiments but let's get back to the flyback now I'm gonna show you several different ways to drive this thing I hope you enjoy it I set up three different flybacks here with different setups on how to use them this right here is a ballast setup it's on a dimmer switch ballast zvs okay over to our first spark right here it's connected to the back right here and on on this okay where normally you would connect it the second one here is a battery connected to a zvs to our flyback okay and this is going to the second one here this is our third setup this is uh zvs to the flyback this is right here a power pack 19 volts three amps okay and it's going to our third spark and basically i just want to show you the difference in this setup if you put a second flyback in series with it you can get it down to a static volt basically you're putting in three amps you're getting like milliamps or less when you do a second one but we're just going to go with one for right now okay and i want to show you the difference in how they look this is the ballast setup right here you can see the ion wind you can see the plasma pulling a little bit before you can see the thickness where the amps come into it not very strong but it's a pretty good uh runner the one on the bottom you could see that's the one with the power pack the one in the middle is the one with the battery you could see the middle one flaming up a lot the one with the power pack barely crosses over the spark gap there so you can see the distinct difference this is the one connected to the battery and you can see very clearly the amps in it now the amps is the white part when you see just the purple uh, when you do the spark gap that's usually just telling you the volt when you see the amps it'll come out in the white so you can see as I pull it apart here exactly how many amps are in this thing and it's a lot this is the one hooked to the power pack as you can see there is a lot of purple in there not a lot of white so it's very very low amps down to milliamps on this one 
Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to make plasma, the circuit to do it, and what you need to look for. These are the plasma projects I'm going to show you how to build today, and I might throw in a couple extra. But here we go. Let's talk about what kind of plasma and how you want to make it. If I want to make something with a lot of amps in it, I'm going to go ahead and use this power pack here. It's designed to put out more amps. But say I didn't want to do that. I wanted to put out less amps. I'd use one of these. This is just a simple power pack. You probably have one laying around your house. Pick one up at yard sale or maybe you just want to buy one. This one right here, 12 volts, 4.16 amps. So this one right here is fairly good for the plasma array that you see that spreads out and I'll show you that. This one right here is 19 volts, 2.37 amps. This one is my go-to on most of my projects that I use for the plasma feature that spreads out. Now, if I wanted to create something with a lot of white in it, then I go ahead and I use this. And actually the voltage turns pink at night. So it makes a real cool look. So if you want to use heavier amps, there's this. Lighter amps, there's this. Now I'll show you the difference in the actual voltage, the way it looks real quick. This is the voltage coming out from a power pack. As you can see, the voltage is real thin. It doesn't have a whole lot of white in it. Perfect for making plasma that sprays out in that cool looking effect. I wouldn't recommend you do this at home unless you want to ride the lightning. So you might ask how I set this stuff up. These things are generally pretty simple. If you look at this, and I'll show you a good picture of it, there's a positive and negative on it. All you have to do is line those up with your battery. I put these little ends on here. I'll show you a better picture of that. And it's a simple wrap around your DC coil here. Probably had a little more zap in it. Anyway, right here, the positive and negative. I've had these things where the amps are so high on this side, this little bracket here, it just burns right off. It unsolders itself, and then I had to solder directly to the board itself. So keep that in mind. Now on your negative, it's just the one that sparks the best. I'll show you a picture of that. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool when you do it. It's a little fun adventure just to have, because maybe you just want to go out and spark something. I, I do that. As a matter of fact, I do it a lot. But anyway, I'll show this better for you, but this is the, one of the setups I use. This is uh, one of my voltage coils, so you're basically going to see this one with the, uh, you're going to see it with the battery right here. So that right there is what's going to create your pink plasma. All you need to do is get your uh, ZVS set up here with your flyback. Okay, and all you're going to do is you're going to put, uh, this is an aluminum ring you can use steel, okay, it won't matter, or copper. And then you're going to take a hole saw and your drill. And all you're going to do is you'll end up centering up the drill. Make sure you tape off the, the light here, okay, so you don't get that in the background because it makes a very bad image. Then you're going to take your wire here. Mine's all kind of funky hooked up to this big old cord that comes across here. And all you're going to do is you got your negative over here. This will be your positive. As you hit the drill, just place that on there as you're holding the drill. Now, pull the drill out before you stop it. Because you'll get a little bit of a shock, depending on how much your ZVS is going, because there's a lot of static going on. Put that right there and make a ring of fire. And uh, I'll show you how it looks. So what I want you to notice right here is you see that the power pack was hooked up earlier and it puts out a lot of amps. As you see in the plasma here, there's a lot of white and yes, it does go into pink, but all that white is the amps in the plasma. That's why this one works the way it does. Again, distance, we are probably about an inch, inch and a quarter on this one because we're not looking for that big giant plasma effect. We're looking for like amp in plasma effect. This one right here is the one I use to create most voltage projects. The actual flyback in here is a little different than the other one. So I'm getting a much thinner spark, 
which is exactly what you're looking for. The thick ones with a lot of white in them have way too many amps. So this is the one I would use the power pack on. Again, I'll show you a better picture of this. As you can see, there's no piece right here. Again, I had to solder it to the back because I overamped it with a different power source than I usually use. But this is the coil that I go to right here. Again, here's the power pack that I use here. And just as a quick understanding, I'll show you this a little better. Oh, anytime you use one of these right here, just remember this right here with the shielding on it of the plastic is your positive. Anything right here with just the metal, it forms around the whole thing. You got to pull it to one side. I solder mine off. That's your negative. One of my favorite things to do with plasma is to connect it with these items here. Now this is just a solid piece of aluminum all the way through. These right here are just saw blades. They were once one blade, pretty big, just like that. Used for cutting tree limbs and stuff. Anyway, what you do is you connect the positive here or the negative, doesn't really matter. They're both positive. So just hook the one you think is positive here, the one you think is negative here. Right about here, you're about an inch and a half off. That's about exactly where you need to be. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but that's where you need to be. And that'll create that nice plasma bridge you see right in between it. Now, you want to get a little more advanced. You take this and this and you set it up in this configuration here. Now, what are you doing? This has to be connected to this one. So these two are connected on the same line. This is connected on the opposite. So if you said these two were negative, this would be the positive wire. Again, distance is important. Now, you may think, well, you're using two, so we're, you need to bring in the distance a little bit. And the answer is no, not at this level. Just right here. This is exactly what you need. So that'll get you this nice plasma look here. One thing to remember is the sound you want to hear. When you hit that sound, you know you're at the correct distance. Maybe you want to do it in saw blades. The key here is metal, no paint. This is a used saw blade, plenty of metal on the ends here. So what do you want to do? Same thing. If you connect it with this right here and straight, you're only going to get the one where the distant distance matches right here. So obviously that's just this. What do you have to do? You have to bend this around the curve to match the saw blade. Now, can you use two saw blades sitting on top of each other? The answer is yes. And all you have to do is you line up the two saw blades here. Again, two. Line them up. Again, put this piece over here and it'll give you the same plasma look. Everything's about a big size and a small size, no matter how you do it. One has to have more mass in metal. That's the key here. And no paint. If you use something that has paint, it's not going to give you that same plasma look you're looking for. It'll actually maybe just spark over once or twice if you're lucky. Or it might just do nothing. The key is no paint. Has to be bare metal. That's how you do it. This is what the saw blades look like when you connect it to the rod now. And you can see on here I bent the rod. And I just want you to look at each one of the little ends of the saw blade here, the little points. They actually make the plasma come right off of it. And that's what you're looking for. A couple of things here. If I just wanted to use a hole saw and a ring, could I do it? Sharp edges, again, metal. Everything depends on distance. As you can see here, the aluminum ring is about an inch and three quarters or so away from the bottom hole saw blade. I didn't show the connections in this one, but obviously the ring is positive and on the bottom the hole saw blade is negative. From the side, this just looks like a bowl. From the top, it kind of looks like a vortex. 
just to show you, you can use just about anything for one of these projects. This right here is my big speed square. This right here is the same saw blade you saw earlier. Now, I can put this on this side right here and create plasma in between it. Why? Because this has more metal in it than this. And again, sharp edges and no paint. This right here makes this effect right here look cool just like this. This right here is a pretty cool effect. What's going on? I have positive on one side, negative on the other, and all I'm doing is converting small to big, and it's sending ion wind down to the other plate. Now, if I pulled it back just a bit, it would just create charge on the disc. This way it converts it over. Just so you're aware, every time it sparks over, it loses charge on the plates, and it has to start over. I just wanted to show you guys this build real quick. This is a 1000 watt ZBS. This is a DC flyback transformer. And this is a second DC flyback transformer. As you can see, we have seven wraps on this and seven on this one. Now the one that goes over top, I put it on this left one here, output B. The one that goes under it goes to output A, which is on this side. Okay, and this right here connects here, and it connects here. This top one here connects here and here. This is run really simple. The hot wire that comes out the red one right there. It connects over here to the ground that goes into this one. Then we have the hot wire that comes out here. Okay, and then that one goes right here to the ground and they spark across here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look real quick. This right here is the schematic for it. And as you can see, we have a power pack on this one. 19 volts, 2.37 amps. Goes to a ZBS. Pretty simple, plus and minus are shown. This right here, exactly the way I showed you it comes out. One wire here, same wire goes into the bottom here. This top wire goes in there, goes all the way, jumps this one. And comes over to this one here. Again, red wire into the ground right here. And then we have the positive that comes out of here. Makes the spark. Here's the negative up here. Comes all the way around. Pretty simple circuit. Easy to build. Okay. Let's go ahead and see. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And then I'm going to turn off the light so you can see the spark a little better. But hopefully you'll be able to see this. So I may actually move this wire closer. I just need this. How about that? The wires, I never want to agree with me. Yeah. Right there, you see a spark. I want to shoot this. Whoa! Crazy stuff going on. Wires moving everywhere. Watch out not to get shot. Uh, now we turn off the light. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Look at the ends. You can already see them lighting up right there. Let's bring it a little closer. And yes, I do have fireworks going on behind me on that one. See it coming together? Let's see. Right there, that's what I want. See that? That purple? Perfect. That's why you build them in, in like this. With two of them together, because you want that right there. And yeah, I do need to replace that uh, <laughs> that transformer. It's, uh, it's bad. But you can see the spark. Get closer, it sparks out. A little further. You get the ion wind. Exactly what we're looking for. It's a perfect setup for that. Alright, let me turn this off without trying to zap the living daylights out of myself. Let's 
All right. Okay, we got the lights back on now. I just want to show you this. This is my ion thruster. This is the reason why you would build one of these. So all we're going to do is I'm going to take this positive here and I'm going to connect it to the top wires. I'm going to take the negative right here and I'm going to connect it to the bottom right there. Okay, I'm going to connect this up real quick and see if we can't get a better shot. There we go. Sorry, it was on my foot. All right, there we go. It's a good shot. Just want to make sure there's no miscellaneous wires hanging off of it. We got this one here. I usually wrap it around the top. This is just for testing, guys. So you can get a look at what we're doing here. Here's our negative. Anywhere on the bottom here, they're all connected all together on the bottom. All the wires are connected into one. So you can just hit one on the negative there. And then let's go ahead and see if we can't move some stuff out of the way. I'm just going to set this right here and get this wire out of our way. Okay. There we go. Let's just make sure the circuit works. And then we'll turn off the lights again. There we go, I can hear it. All right, I'm gonna go turn off the lights real quick and you can see it. Let's see, I have to turn off the TV on it. There we go. You can see it right in there now. Look at that. Now this one's kind of beat up. I've been using it a lot. You can see every point where there's a sharp point, it breaks out. So there's ion wind coming off of it right now. So this is what that circuit could do. And I got a busted transformer that's starting to burn out on me and it's still producing this. So it's a pretty good circuit if you want to run it. I have the STLs for this right here or the uh, 3D printed files. Or you can make your own online. I'll go ahead and do, put the link in the description for you. But I just wanted to show you this. It's a pretty cool setup. And it makes some pretty awesome ion wind. I want to show you guys this. Look. Through the top of the thruster at night. You see all those little uh, lights? Or like, I, I don't know what to call them. Everywhere that you see them. Is where my razor blade went over the uh, magnet wire to make it bare. So you can see just the, the total amount of uh, ions that are pulling from there only. The rest of the magnet wire doesn't do anything. It's just this little bunch. Okay? So if I probably add more, okay, I can get a little bit more, but it doesn't add in the amount that it comes out, right? So we're getting, what, like 2.3 ms out of a regular thruster. But by adding a second wire, and you can see it in there right there. So it's 2 right there, and then it goes down to one bar in the middle. It did add volume to the total amount of air coming out. So we added more air coming out, okay, which will eventually give us more thrust. But, okay, we didn't change the amount coming out. So I hope you understand that. Just give you a better look. I think a really nice light show if you're watching it. You can see just a total cloud there now. It used to be real thin. I didn't show it the other one at night. But uh, anyway, it comes up real nice. Just thought it'd be cool to show you that. It's a really, really neat thing to see at night. In case you were wondering how much air was pushing out of this with the ion wind, 2.4 meters per second is about what I got. And on this one, it's not hooked up in double form. It's just a single one blowing it this time. And as you can see right here, turn on one last time, 2.4, it jumps up to 2.9, but it's more of an anomaly than the 2.4 consistently coming out of it. But once in a while it gets there. 
Here are some high voltage experiments that I did. Here's the first one, voltage walking. Here's the second experiment. I call it pins and needles. This is the third experiment. We've all seen voltage on a round magnet. This is what it looks like on a rotating magnet. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I did demagnetize those magnets, putting them in the high voltage field. Those went in the trash. So if you want to find flybacks and you don't know where to look, this is a CRT TV, or otherwise known as a tube TV. And yes, there's a flyback in here. But the question is, do we have to rip it out? Or can we just use it as is? This is a spark cap for a CRT TV or basically a tubed TV. It's a 27 inch TV. The positive gets connected to the flyback transformer. The negative gets attached to the strap on the TV. It also has a connection to the motherboard, which I'll show you later. And yes, I do have to clean it. That's probably just all the garbage on there smoking off. The spark cap on this gets pretty big, but you have to start it real small. As you can see, we're about one inch away when we start. We get up to about uh, three and three quarter inches on this thing. Uh, pretty decent spark, pretty good on amps. Uh, it's not as light as two flybacks together, so it's got a real thicker uh, approach to it at the beginning, and it thins out as you pull it apart. I wanted to see how strong it was, so I also tested it on my thruster. So the measurements are three and three quarters or 95 millimeters. The negative connects to the motherboard right here to the strapping. The very last thing you have to do is connect the uh, positive to the uh, top of the flyback. So this is just one of the first of many power sources that I'm going to keep trying to try to find a better power source for lifters and things. At this point, I'm not too encouraged with this. It's going to need some modifications to do right. I built this double helix Jacob's ladder, and it looks pretty cool. The high voltage goes up it and spins around all the way until it explodes out the top. Anyway, this is how you build it. So what I'm using right now is a 1,000 watt ZBS driver, a 24 volt battery for my Craftsman drill. I'm also using a flyback DC transformer. And then the actual metal here is just twisted around a pole. Uh, as you can see, you do one and then the other, one then the other all the way up, just like you're braiding. And uh, it comes out pretty cool. You get it to the top, you'll have to adjust it a little bit just uh, to make the breakout point uh, where they don't touch right away. And at the bottom, you need to bring it in close enough that they touch enough, but still let the thing drive forward and go up. This is my first attempt at making this. It actually turned out pretty good. There were a few sticking points on it. They kind of held it up a little bit, but it went up pretty good for the first time doing it. The distance on this all the way up is about an inch apart. It's important to maintain that distance all the way up. You do not want it to spark early or die out on you. So the distance is important. Also at the very top, you have to have it a little bit wider or else it'll just start at the top and it won't start at the bottom. So just maintain your distance and you'll be all right and it'll break out at the top. 
As you can see here, I cut it a little bit shorter. I think it comes out a little better this way. Both effects are cool. You could do either one. Uh, I just wanted to show it a little bit shorter here. I think the breakout on the top is a little better. The reason it doesn't go all the top to the top all the time is because I have to put in the uh, power manually on and off, on and off like that. It's not reciprocating like it probably should. So I'm going to have to look into that and see if I can't get that right. Otherwise, I'll just put something on it uh, to make it go intermittently like that, like a switch or something like that. Maybe I'll do a MOSFET for uh, on and off on this thing. But you can see with the shoulder, it looks pretty cool. You know, sometimes you just get bored, so you just try things. So I just have a coil here, and I want to put a spark cap through it. And Well, let's just see what it sounds like. So originally I was going to build this thing as an atmosphere motor and well I failed so I decided to just hit it with a lot of high voltage and see what it looked like and well you could see that it pretty much is starting on fire yeah that was fun you know you just can't win them all Most people see this experiment as a can being moved by static electricity, but did you know high voltage can do the exact same thing? Here is the static electricity experiment. It just works on a simple principle. Take the cloth, rub the rod, and it'll move the can. The static electricity does the rest. Now let's use some high voltage, and let's see if we can't get the can to move again. As you can see, both effects have worked. Why? Because we're polarizing the can. As you can see here, I sanded the can down. Why? Because it reacts better to the high voltage when it has metal to metal. Just to show you that the high voltage is actually on and it's working well, let's go ahead and turn off the lights and see if we can't get a little plasma now that the can is sanded a little bit. As you can see, the high voltage works just fine. We get a great plasma out of it. And yes, I do need some new wires. They uh, have cut open with the high voltage experiments and they seem to blast plasma everywhere. I'll tell you what though, it does make a cool look with that wire being messed up. It actually shows you just a stream of plasma coming off that thing. For those of you who are doing high voltage experiments, you should really understand this simple fact. When you thin out the voltage and remove the amps, it acts just like static electricity, and it polarizes things. In this experiment, we just use a simple can. Whether it be from static electricity or from the high voltage, it has the exact same effect. As you probably noticed in the last video, I switched from a DC flyback to an AC flyback with a voltage multiplier on it. You're probably wondering how I did that. Well, here you go. I'll show you exactly how to build it. This project is extremely high voltage, so please follow every safety precaution you can if you build this. Alright, let's get into it. 
I just wanted to show up front this is our schematic that we're going to use don't worry I'm going to show it again later and explain it this is a voltage multiplier that I've already built and I just wanted to take the time to show you the back diodes it's important the way they go in on the front here we want a clean look we just want to space them out evenly we're going to start here with our plain prototyping board again this is not the green one this has no metal in it it's just a plain board this part right here is pretty much up to your discretion on how you want to place these in here all I would say is you want to keep it neat and clean make it nice so take your time count out the little holes move the things around uh, it's just important that they line up in a row and the more evenly spaced you have these the better off you're going to be on the next part of the project I generally like to keep three holes in between each capacitor that keeps it pretty even all the way down the line now it's just boring and tedious process you have to do here and I'm going to skip through this just a little bit just so that you can see that they go in there evenly once we get to six we're just going to go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side now that we have them all put in place we're going to go ahead and turn this board over and we're going to take a look real quick at the uh, original that we started with and then we're going to go ahead and make ours just like it we're going to start here at the bottom these two just hang off the end here don't worry about them let's go on to the next ones we just cross each one over in a row going down the line once you get all that done the top two just like the bottom two will go off the end of the board now all the ones we crossed over each other have to be soldered together there's a couple ways of doing this in this one I'm going to show you right here in the beginning we're going to go ahead and solder it and then cut the ends and clean up the solder and I'll show you another way in a minute this is the second way to do it and generally the way I prefer to do it once they're crossed over each other and you know the size and go ahead and just cut them off line them up and we're just going to solder them like that when you're doing this part just take your time and do it sometimes these things bend funny sometimes they're not pushed all the way in it's just kind of annoying but you have to kind of get through it when you're done cutting and soldering them they should look just like this now that we're all cut and soldered up let's go ahead and take a look at the two pieces of metal that we hang over the side from the capacitor you can see that we're going to start our first diode right here going directly to one of those I know I just skipped over a little bit and soldered a bunch in but the most important thing here is to look at the direction where that little gray strip is that's the most important thing when you put in these diodes is make sure it matches this just to show you how I do this I go ahead and I put the diode over the top I just cut it to length right so it sits right on top of it and then I go ahead and solder it in one thing to note when you do this you don't want to leave any sharp edges so when you smooth that solder over make sure it's nice and clean and smooth when you're going from left to right like this I like to always solder in a side that has only one connection going into it first then I bring it back over to the other once you get your size cut right here you're going to want to put your thumb right over the two diodes themselves and you're going to want to hold this thing down while you put some solder on here it's just a lot easier it makes it connect easier and you don't have to mess around with stuff at this point we'll only have two more diodes to put in again look up at the top on those two pieces of metal we left hanging over from the capacitor we're going to connect to those now as we put in these last two diodes again I just want you to take a look at where they sit in comparison to the capacitor and now let's put in that final diode so we can complete this project on the left side here the metal coming from the capacitor is now unneeded the other side we leave long because it's the power side at this point our voltage multiplier is complete let's go ahead and compare it with the original and let's make sure everything turned out right as you can see everything matches up we did a good job 
Now it's time to test this thing again. I just wanted to make sure you use all safety precautions. Okay, so we're going to compare right here. Here is our battery on our right side and our ZVS. Again, here we go. I only have one side connected right now. The other side is this far side. These two are communication in the center. And that's our negative right there. The white was our positive going on this one. So we have it there. We go to our flyback right here, AC flyback. You can see it goes over on the bottom side and under on the top side. Again, two wires coming off. Exactly what we got here. Then we go ahead and look each wire. They're both connected to one side. So let's take a look now. Here we go. Here's our multiplier. Here's our sketch and what we want to do. Again, you see the ground on the right side. Power coming out of the single. So let's see. Two wires here where this wire is. Power on this side. Ground on this side. We look at it coming in. And now we got our spark. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Let's see what we can do. As you can see, we all work. It looks good. I like it. We're going to build voltage across two capacitors here. The top one is a paper plate capacitor, and the bottom one is just a di small disc capacitor. Now, you see the uh, aluminum foil over the sides. It was because I wasn't getting the effect with just the capacitors alone. This video was actually requested by someone who watches my channel quite a bit and comments a lot. This is for you, Obi-Wan. As you can see, the voltage goes right across the two capacitors here. The outside is a little longer on the top plate, so that's where it's going to spark across. When you put them flat, you don't get much of anything, so you have to have some kind of a spiky edge on the side. And it just sounds terrifying. How cool is that? Let's go ahead and take a look at this at night, because it's really so much more of an awesome effect. You kind of see it bouncing in here it's because every time that you see the purple in there that's the high voltage right there and it puts off an ion wind and it's actually blowing the top part up it's just on a flimsy stick so it's easy to maneuver with this So the question you must be asking by now is, are the capacitors doing much in this? We know that we get uh, high voltage sparks like this on regular foil, but what are the capacitors doing? The capacitors themselves are just amplifying the amount of sparking between the two. Normally this takes a little bit uh, shorter of a distance to get this kind of arcing, 
but the capacitors themselves make the arc a bit longer because it holds it and then drops the spark. Holds it and drops the spark every time. I wanted to show these photos again. I just want people to understand. People think the sparks only come from one side. They actually come from both. One comes from the top, as you normally see in this, and then some come from the bottom. So you can see that in these two pictures here. If you look close, there's two voltage spikes that come from the bottom. Our Earth works the same way. We see the voltage coming from the sky, but rarely people know that voltage actually comes up to meet it. So it just started to break daylight in my garage just a little bit. And I want you to see this because the plasma that it comes out, you can see the glow of it and then it starts sparking off and then you see the glow again. I think in the future what I need to do is just stabilize the top plate and the bottom one and I bet you I can get a nice plasma glow at night. Or maybe it's just better this way. Spark it, get the plasma. Spark it, get the plasma. I don't know. Looks cool either way to me. So there was one more cool effect that happened during this build and I just wanted you to see it. What you're going to see is the plasma break out on the side here on the foil and it's going to start to make that alien sound again. Beautiful plasma arrays are easy to build, but how do you get this effect and avoid this effect? Yeah, just sparking over like crazy. And then what's going on during the day when you can't see it? Is it still doing the same thing? Yeah, it is, but you just can't see it because it's not nighttime. Let's take a look at how it's done. The first thing we need to do is just set this thing up. So what we're looking for is the saw blades to be equal distance from whatever object we put in the center. In this case, it was just a double helix project I had left over. So what I did is set them equal distance apart. They're about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half away from the double helix. And what it does when you move it too close, it starts to spark. When it stays far enough away, it hisses. And then if it's too far away, it won't do anything. Once you have the hiss, turn off the lights and you'll get this. Let's take a look at this other project. I built a coil around a uh, all thread and I was trying to get it to spark around in a circle all the way up. The voltage doesn't work that way. I went ahead and changed the coil just down to one coil. So that you can see what it actually was doing. On this one I just offset the coil a little bit. So it will go high and low. Here's the power source. Here's the battery right here I used for my drill. This is a 1000 watt ZVS and an AC flyback. And this is my voltage multiplier circuit. The negative of the voltage multiplier circuit goes to the all thread. I put it underneath so that it doesn't come in contact with the positive. The positive goes over to the ring itself. Once you connect all those, it's time to light it up. If you're wondering how I built the voltage multiplier or the circuit itself that you just saw, 
I will add a video to the end of this one and you can go ahead and watch it and I do the complete build on it. I wanted to show you two more things here with this coil that I thought were really cool. This one here when you put the voltage into it you see it sparking over. You can also see the, the lights coming out today. Uh, it's no longer nighttime. So you can see just barely some plasma in there. Uh, but the coil does move uh, as you turn it on because it wants to roll towards the saw blade. You're probably wondering the other experiments with the coil. If you get something down the center, can you get it to light up? Well, yeah, I could. Unfortunately, the lighting outside just got a little lighter and uh, it changed the effect, but it looks cool. As you could probably tell with a lot of high voltage projects I do, I use these saw blades because they are just awesome for putting out plasma. So I wired these all together. See if I can't get them all to spark at once. I saw a guy on the internet put these between his legs and fired them all off. I'm going to give it a shot myself. So I got these two batteries here hooked up and I'll just show you what it does. Yeah, that between your legs. All right, it's going to be fun. Remember when your mom told you not to do stupid things? Yeah, this is one of them. I know this is terrifying for most of you, but honestly, I just couldn't stop laughing the entire time it was going on. Man, some of those plasma displays, man, they're just gorgeous to look at. But then some of those high voltage ones, man, they just whoo, rip right through there and they're scary as heck. Man, I really do enjoy doing this. I mean, when you really want to blow off some steam, light up some plasma, man. You know what? I really had a great time doing this. I hope you guys looked at all the experiments and enjoyed every one just like I did when I made them. Anyway, if you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, do all those fun things and have yourself a great day.